Welcome back to Proxam, everybody. And today we're going to be taking a quick foray, a journey, if you will, into another dimension, into something that I used to play myself when GW actually supported the game. And that is, of course, Warhammer Fantasy. And I've mentioned it a couple times on this channel that I used to play Warhammer Fantasy. I actually used to play the dwarves. I had a lot of fun playing the dwarves, even though they're not really my play style. I think. You know, it must have been the beards or something because I always had fun playing them, even though they're pretty, you know, by Eldar standards, a boring army to play. But I really enjoyed my dwarves, and for a long time, I played them with much gusto. And what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to talk about a reawakening of Warhammer Fantasy brought about by GW. Now, as most of you know, Warhammer Fantasy is no longer a GW-supported game, but why did this happen? How did this happen? And when did this happen? A lot of you newer players might not even know about this or what transpired or what made Warhammer Fantasy a dead game. So I want to explore that a little bit with you guys because GW has announced Warhammer Old World, which is basically a revival of the old Warhammer Fantasy. And I kind of have a couple things that I want to get off my back that I think you guys should know about Warhammer Fantasy. Those of you guys thinking of getting into the game, and the title says it all, right? Why I won't play Warhammer Old World, and why you shouldn't either. And just a disclaimer, real quick, right off the bat, I don't mean to obviously bum anybody out by, this, by doing this video. I don't mean to be a downer or anything. That's not what this channel is about. Never has been, and never will be. You know, I'm not a complainer, typically. Now... Here's the thing, though. I think that what GW did to Warhammer Fantasy was the absolute most scummy thing you could ever do to your player base. And I say this for all things. You know, I've played video games for a lot of my life, and I can tell you from experience. And I've played a lot of games from scummy companies before, you know, that use pay-to-win models and use basically, you know, boosts and things like that to make some players feel really powerful while other players are just kind of left in the dust and have no fun. I've played games like that. I didn't stay with them, right? There's a reason for that. It's because I think that a gaming company that is not dedicated to its players and the enjoyment of its player base is not fulfilling its main objective. And I believe that this is one of those moments in GW's history where they did not only fail to fulfill their objective, but they actually created a situation where they invariably destroyed their own community. So without further ado, let us jump right into the ultimate grudge, Warhammer fantasy and the Warhammer old world. So just a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about in this video today. We're going to be looking at what Warhammer old world is. We're going to be kind of reviewing why the end times, which was an event in GW's history revolving around Warhammer Fantasy, destroyed the actual game itself. We're going to be talking about the GW announcement of Old World in 2019. And we're also going to lastly be talking about the announcement of new base sizes for Warhammer Old World miniatures. So what is Warhammer Old World? So a lot of you guys probably aren't interested in this because maybe fantasy isn't your thing, but Warhammer Old World is not a new game. It's a game that has already been out and used to be called Warhammer Fantasy. So it is a reincarnation of GW's classic tabletop war game, of course, Warhammer Fantasy. A lot of you guys may have used to play Warhammer Fantasy. I, for one, was a big fan. I really liked the game. It was basically like if you imagine Warhammer Total War, it was kind of like that, but on tabletop. So Warhammer Old World, the announcement, they're going to have a new set of rules, a reimagined version of Warhammer Fantasy, new models, fully supported with, you know, army books, codexes, whatever you want to call them, and a rule book. And it takes place before the end times in Warhammer history. So why did the end times destroy Warhammer Fantasy? So to set the groundwork for you guys, Warhammer Fantasy was a game that GW supported, but honestly did not support as much as Warhammer 40k. And the reason why this is, is because Warhammer Fantasy was much less popular. Warhammer 40k, obviously, really cool looking futuristic models. More people generally are into sci-fi and not into fantasy. So Warhammer 40k was the premier choice for new players coming into the game. 
And Warhammer Fantasy was more of a classic game. You know, usually an older group of gamers were playing Warhammer Fantasy. And most of the time, you'd have a much, you know, more concise player base when trying to get Warhammer Fantasy games in. And this is also kind of what made Warhammer Fantasy so great, was the fact that we were a really tight community, it was concise, we really loved the game, and we were really invested in it. So in 2015, after basically releasing a couple of new army books for Warhammer Fantasy, I think they released Dwarfs, if my memory serves me correctly, Skaven, and Orcs. So this was kind of unexpected, but basically GW in 2015 announced something big and exciting was going to happen in Warhammer Fantasy. And a lot of us were like really excited for this because this probably meant a new edition of Warhammer Fantasy. And a lot of us were excited for a new edition because to be honest with you guys, one of the things that was really crazy about Warhammer Fantasy was the magic phase. So I know, you know, I just did a video talking about the psychic phase in 10th edition. And how they basically eliminated the psychic phase and rolled it into other phases. Well, basically magic in fantasy was very, very overpowered. And when I mean that, I mean that one spell could destroy an entire unit of 30 men, right? So I played dwarves and dwarves are resistant to magic. But oftentimes I would find myself, even with anti-magic, you know, runes and abilities, having my most expensive unit destroyed to the last dwarf by something like Plague of Rust, or or not Plague of Rust, what was it called? Transmutation of Gold, right? There were spells in there that could just eliminate a dwarf unit right off the table. And that was pretty insane, right? I mean, think about it. You know, units back then, you have a dwarf unit, probably costs around 300 points to field, and a spellcaster worth 100 points could kill it in one turn. Magic was very, very overpowered. So that was one of the issues with Warhammer Fantasy at the time. It wasn't a big issue, though, because you know what? Most of the time, we were just having fun games in our group. We weren't playing super competitively. So it wasn't that big of a deal. But we were still happy to see a new edition and see what changes GW was going to bring. So in the months leading up to the announcement, many players speculated that a new edition was coming out. And we were genuinely excited because of the balance of the game was really off and needed to tune up. Again, like I said, magic was OP, certain units were running rampant, and the last couple of army books were just super overpowered. The Skaven book, for example, basically no one could beat Skaven because their rules were so unbalanced. So just to give you guys an idea of what would happen, basically a Skaven unit of pack rats, or I don't know what they're called, clan rats or something like that, of 30 could not be broken unless they had less ranks than you had, which was honestly against most armies impossible because, (laughs) you know, you're fielding elite infantry, you're fielding either dwarfs or, you know, if you're playing high elves, you're, you know, running units that are a lot more expensive. So the fact that clan rats could basically hold against a unit of sword masters for several turns was a little bit ridiculous. And all the while they had rules that allowed them to, you know, bomb things in combat, basically shoot things off the board with, you know, these kind of like warp stone infused weapons. And there was this weapon that was basically a cheese weapon, in my opinion. It was the warp lightning cannon, which could, you know, target units in combat because it had a mechanic that allowed it to do so. And yeah, there was a risk that you would kill your own rats, but who cares when your rats are three points a model and you're going against, you know, things that are 18, 15 points a model sometimes. It was just a very unbalanced system. So a lot of the newer armies were pretty unbalanced. And, you know, this was a low point in the game as far as balance went. But, you know, honestly, other than that, it was a fun game. And many of us had also gotten the newly released models. You know, I, for one, had gotten two boxes of the new hammers and iron breakers, which I thought were super cool. Or what were they called? Iron breakers and iron drakes. That's what it was. And I built a bunch of iron breakers with it. It was super fun. And honestly, I was having a great time with the hobby. So when the day finally came, GW released the end times. All of us gathered together, orcs, dwarfs, elves, and humans alike, gathered around the shop to read the end times, united in our excitement as we read on. Unfortunately, what we read was like being forced to eat a steaming plate of boiled dicks. What we read 
was essentially the end of Warhammer Fantasy as we knew it. Beloved characters, dead. Famous empires, annihilated. The entire planet, destroyed and broken apart and sent into space. At first, a lot of us thought this might be a joke. GW is having one on on us. GW is having a good laugh about this. Unfortunately, it was no joke. GW was dead serious. After learning of what happened to the old world and the lore, GW announced they would be discontinuing Warhammer Fantasy and replacing it with something they called Age of Sigmar. And as a way to reassure all of us, just kind of like in the same way that people who are about to butcher a chicken pet it a little bit before chopping its head off, they told us, don't worry, you'll still be able to use the models you own to play Age of Sigmar. Not only was this entirely false, barely any old models made it into any of the Age of Sigmar armies, but the bases of all the models changed from square to round. So even if we did just want to play Age of Sigmar, we couldn't because the base sizes did actually matter for this game. This was a smaller based skirmish game, which was very unlike Warhammer Fantasy, and the base size did matter on your models. And a lot of people were upset about this in the Warhammer Fantasy community. I mean, they had effectively destroyed the game that we had loved so much. And initially, people did try to get on board with Age of Sigmar. They said, give it a chance. It may be a good game. It may be a good game. Who knows, right? But unfortunately, many fantasy players quit soon after, me included, because there was no trace of the old game left. It was so different from Warhammer Fantasy that everything we loved about the old game was completely shattered and gone, twisted by the warp. I, for one, had over 3,000 points and over $2,000 worth of dwarfs. And by the way, guys, back then, fantasy models were really expensive. If you wanted to buy a full unit of dwarfs or a full unit of knights or whatever, that was going to cost you a pretty penny. You were going to spend $250 on that, possibly more depending on what you were buying especially some of the special units and rare units in your army book would be extremely expensive. So yeah, I sunk over $2,000 in this army and a lot of time painting it. And by the way, as you guys know, I'm not the best painter out there. I'm not the quickest painter out there. So this took a long time for me to paint. And dwarves are, you know, kind of one of the easier armies to paint. You know, you really just have to paint metal and beards, <laughs> right? But even so, this took me a very long time, and this was a gradual buildup of over six years. Other players had much larger collections than I did. And I'm talking about some players had 5,000, 6,000, sometimes even 12,000 or more points worth of fantasy models. Some people had multiple fantasy armies. I only had dwarves. But some people had empire, lizardmen, basically anything you could think of, dark elves. These were a group of older veterans who had played the game for close to 20 years and had a large collection. And all of a sudden, at the drop of the hat, GW says, we're not supporting this game anymore. The game is basically, as you know it, dead. And this was extremely sad. A lot of players gave up for a while or just continued playing with the old rules, which really didn't feel great because, again, like I said, the game was left in such a balanced shambles that a lot of people had to house rule things in and change things on their own, which was fine. They still had fun playing the game, but essentially, GW wasn't supporting it anymore. And all the armies that had old codexes or old army books that hadn't been updated yet were just left to rot. After a few years of trying to play other games and proxy my dwarfs in Kings of War, which was kind of like a similar game, but not quite. I gave up and I sold my dwarf army to somebody I knew would use it. Somebody who played Kings of War and liked it, but I didn't. I wasn't a Kings of War fan. I think it's a good game, but it just wasn't my style. I missed Warhammer Fantasy too much. And in the end, it was a sad day for all Dawi. Really, it was sad. It was sad selling the army. You know, having 3000 points, of dwarfs, fully painted, fully based, beards bristling, axes glistening, armor shining in the mines below. It was upsetting, I have to admit, you know, and for everybody who knows that pain, 
I'm with you. For anybody who played Warhammer Fantasy and had to sell their army after Age of Sigmar, I'm with you, brother. Afterward, I contented myself with playing Warhammer Total War, reciting the tales of old and settling grudges in a video game, which was honestly, in my opinion, a shadow of what Warhammer Fantasy once was. And don't get me wrong, Warhammer Total War is a fun game, but it is no Warhammer Fantasy because there are no dice, there are no tape measures, and no army books. So, yeah, Warhammer Total War was fun, but not the same thing as Warhammer Fantasy. And then years later, something stirred in the darkness. GW, out of nowhere announces the return of Old World in 2019. So GW came out with an article on Warhammer Community announcing that they were bringing back Warhammer Fantasy in two to three years, and maybe a little bit longer. They said, basically, that they had all decided that Warhammer Fantasy was indeed a good game that had a lot of popular support, and they were bringing it back. No doubt, because of the huge commercial success of Warhammer Total War, and the renewed interest in the game style. And I have to stress this. It was not because of the Warhammer community itself. It was because people were playing Warhammer Total War and they were interested in the world again, the old world. Which, by the way, Age of Sigmar looked nothing like. So I know a few of you out there might actually play Age of Sigmar, Hell, I know some of you might even like Age of Sigmar, but I didn't. And personally, I found there to be nothing similar with Age of Sigmar as there was with Warhammer Fantasy, except for the races. The races were the same. You still had dwarves, you still had rats, you still had, you know, high elves to some degree. But other than that, all traces of the old game and art style were completely gone. And when I heard this announcement, of the return of Warhammer Fantasy, I was a bit excited, I have to admit. I was ready to rebuild my dwarves, get them back out on the table, and settle some grudges. And, you know, despite the fact that I sold my army, I was still excited for it. Again, I wanted to rebuild. And I was especially glad for all the players who I knew kept their armies and were excited to play Fantasy again after so many years. And just to give you some context, remember what I said before, that these players had sometimes over 10,000 points worth of Warhammer Fantasy armies. So they had a lot of stuff, and they were excited to play again. And I was happy that, you know, they did keep their armies and showcases and things like that, and they would finally be able to play them again. I was really happy for those players in my local community. I was really glad that, you know, GW was bringing the game back. Years pass by, COVID comes and goes, And then GW makes a new announcement about Old World that spun my fucking head around. And I say that with absolute surety. That the F word is the exact word that needs to be used in this case. GW has the absolute audacity to announce new base sizes for Warhammer Old World miniatures. Wait, what? You mean the bases people used for Warhammer Fantasy are no longer the valid base size? And if they want to keep playing competitively, dedicated players that kept their armies and waited through the bullshit that was Age of Sigmar won't be able to use their old models unless they replace their old bases with the new resized versions? You've got to be kidding me. So basically, you either have to buy a whole new army or you have to tear off all of the bases that you worked hard on and replace them with this, you know, new base size. That's just despicable. Fellow war gamers, a great wrong has been committed against our people this day. (coughs) Oh, God, where's Thorgrim when you need him? Oh, anyway, for years we have waited. For years we have suffered. How much gold left our hands to fill the coffers of GW, only to have the gems dangled before our eyes and then yanked away with nary a thought. This is a grudge of the worst kind. 
to force our beloved Longbeards to tear up their miniatures, only to replace the base. For shame. A grudge is born on this day. As Grungi is my witness, I hereby record this in our great book of grudges, to be remembered for all of eternity until settled. Who the hell was that? You guys see that? Fuck. Anyway, well, so here are my closing thoughts on the matter. This old world release is a blatant attempt by GW to require older players to buy new armies if they want to play in competitive games and events. Requiring this new base size is an absolute money grab. So either players need to rip up their old bases or they need to buy entirely new armies, which again is just more money and more time that they have to spend than they have already. And honestly, you know, I wasn't going to do a video like this because it's not really my channel's you know, scope. You know, I'm a Craft World Eldar channel. I, I talk about Eldar, Dark Eldar, Harlequins, stuff like that. But I needed to get this off my chest because I see a lot of people on YouTube, you know, YouTubers and stuff like that, really excited about the new base sizes. You know, they're making these videos on new base sizes. How great. This is going to be great because we can fit more bullshit on our bases when we build them and paint them and stuff like that. And honestly, for what? Just to buy the same stuff you already have from when you started Warhammer Fantasy years ago? Just so that you can put an extra skull or an extra rock on your base, you're going to pay all that extra money? I mean, you know, I get it. People want to buy miniatures. I know GW is going to come out with a new miniature line for a lot of these armies, and they're going to have support now and stuff like that, and that's great. I don't want to dissuade anybody really from loving Warhammer Fantasy because I think it's a great game, and I, for one, have always liked the style of that type of game anyway. But you also can't fall into that trap where you're just blatantly, you know, falling over the cliff for every little thing GW does and, you know, are super excited about every, you know, announcement that GW makes. You have the right to be pissed about some stuff and you have the right to be objective and honestly critical of some of the stuff that GW is coming out with, even if it's a beloved game like Warhammer Fantasy, that you're really excited that, you know, it's coming back. And honestly, I had no problem with, you know, Warhammer Fantasy coming out, you know, when Old World was announced, I was excited, like I said in the beginning of the video. But just due to the fact that the base sizes are changing, and for any of you who play rank and file type war games on tabletop, you guys know how important base size is, right? It's basically determines how your unit's going to move, how it pivots, how the models line up, how many attacks you're going to get. You know, your models need to be touching other models' bases. So if you have smaller base sizes, you're going to be either at an extreme disadvantage in the game or, honestly, you're just not going to be able to play it. It's not going to be a fair matchup because of how the rules are written and how fantasy games like that with, you know, you know square bases are typically played in a rank-and-file fashion. So... You know, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to come out and say it. I think this is a bad move by GW. I think even though you can still play with your old models, you're really only going to be able to play with them in a very casual setting where people don't care about unfair or, you know, kind of disadvantages or advantages in a game. And to me, that's really unfortunate. And for all you guys out there who are wondering and thinking about getting into Warhammer Old World, do consider this. You know, I probably, because of this, will not be playing Warhammer Old World, at least for a very long time, unless they change something or they make something, you know, an accommodation for people with small based sized miniatures. I won't be playing it just to be in solidarity with all those players who have 10,000 plus points of models that now cannot be used in competitive play or in even semi-competitive play. But obviously that doesn't mean that you don't have to do it. And for you new players who are just getting into the game for the first time when Old World comes out, it's not going to matter much to you. But for this long beard, it was just one grudge too far. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much to all my Patreons and supporters of the channel. I will leave the Patreon and PayPal links in the description for those of you who want to support the channel further. And once again, thank you so much. Have some great games this weekend, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody. Peace out.